The available options for non-pharmacologic migraine management with the really strongest evidence include cognitive behavioral therapy, which includes stress management training, biofeedback, and relaxation training. And all three of these can be taught to patients who live with migraine uh, to help manage both prevent attacks and also once an attack has started to possibly reduce the duration, the severity, the intensity and help the person get through the attack. These are nice treatment options because they can be combined with medication or done independently. And these are great treatment options, especially for women who are considering pregnancy or who may be pregnant or lactating. They do not carry side effects or the concerns that some medications do. Um, they're also cost effective and they're good for patients who may want to avoid medication. However, the research shows that their best efficacy is when they're combined with the most appropriate optimized pharmacologic treatment. So really the gold standard is to have patients get the best pharmacologic plus the personalized behavioral treatment combined for the very best outcomes. These treatments are supported by decades and hundreds of studies, including half a dozen meta-analyses. So the research is very strong. And in three different meta-analyses comparing these preventive treatments such as biofeedback, cognitive behavioral therapy and relaxation training with a preventive pharmacologic agent, their outcome of doing just a behavioral treatment or just using a preventive pharmacologic agent was somewhat similar. They were in a similar efficacy range. Um, however, in three different studies that combined the pharmacologic and the non-pharmacologic treatment, the outcomes were by far superior with more than 70% of people showing good response to the combined pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic treatment. Some of these treatments can be taught and learned by the patient on their own such as relaxation training. There are trainings available for free all over the internet. In fact, I have guided visual imagery and diaphragmatic breathing and progressive muscle relaxation exercise available free on my personal website, which is dawnbuse.com, D-A-W-N-B-U-S-E.com. But patients can actually find guided imagery and mindfulness all over the internet, including uh, websites offered by UCLA, UC San Diego, um, also free apps that are available through the iTunes Store, the Google Play Store, and a lot of great meditations available on um, in the iTunes Store itself, actually, um, as, as, as audio files. So there's a lot of things patients can do without going to a psychologist or a biofeedback technician in terms of learning the relaxation approaches. In terms of learning to do biofeedback, that is something that's taught and engaged in the office with a psychologist, possibly an occupational therapist or physical therapist. And in order to find a practitioner for biofeedback, um, there are links on the the uh, AAPB, Association for the Advancement of uh, Physiologic and Biofeedback Therapies website has links to find a provider in the US. And this is often covered by insurance. In fact, I practice biofeedback in my office and am able to bill insurance. So patients can probably get insurance coverage if they find a psychologist or provider who's in their network. In terms of cognitive behavioral therapy, you'll want to look for a psychologist with training in cognitive behavioral therapy, and, and it's good if they have a background in, in health management, either chronic pain or migraine or both, because there are some specific things we do when we're working with CBT for migraine or CBT for chronic pain that might be slightly different than a generalized cognitive behavioral therapy. And so in order to find a practitioner who would be a provider of CBT for a health condition, someone can look on the Society for Behavioral Medicine website, the AA, ABCT, Association for the Advancement of Behavioral and Cognitive Therapies website, or also the APA, American Psychological Association website. And I have links to everything I just mentioned on my website under resources. So donbuse.com under resources, I link to all those ability to find a provider there.
So if someone is working as a primary care professional and wants to get a patient engaged in the idea of adding behavioral practice to their medication management of migraine. What they might want to do is encourage the patient to listen to an audio relaxation file such as I have on my website just so they know what it's going to be about. Maybe they can learn some of the diaphragmatic breathing, uh, do a guided visual imagery, learn some of the relaxation techniques. And that may kind of demystify the process a little bit. Um, and once the patients become comfortable with that idea, then they may be interested to go on and actually seek out biofeedback or cognitive behavioral therapy with a professional who provides those services. And so that's a nice entree for starting. And it's very important when a primary care professional makes that referral that they clarify they're not abandoning the patient, they believe the patient has a biologic, neurologic condition which they are going to continue to treat, but they're really just bringing on a team member into the care team. Because when a patient hears psychology psychologist, it's really easy to think, oh no, my doctor thinks I'm crazy, my, my healthcare professional thinks this is all in my head and this isn't real. So I like to clarify, start by saying, I'm adding a member to our team, you have a real biologic, neurologic condition, we're just gonna add some more tools to our armamentarium to best treat you. And that way we might destigmify the referral and make the patient more likely to follow through. Biobehavioral treatments are a great addition to the toolkit that primary care providers already have for their patients. Not only can it help with managing the migraine, but it can help with all sorts of associated symptoms like the depression and anxiety, which is common, frustration and lack of self-efficacy, which patients may start to feel, and it can also help with adherence and motivation. So in effect, by making that referral and getting a healthcare professional on your team, it might make their task in caring for their patients a little bit easier too.